the common mod. Um, success in common module, especially when we're looking at essays, is nailing a thesis writing, being able to write a thesis that's specific to the question. That's very important. You know, you can have an awesome essay with amazing analysis, but if it's not answering the question that's asked on the day, it's pointless. The marker is going to know immediately when you've got a memorized essay that you're trying to fit into the question versus when you're actually thoughtfully um, you know, structuring your analysis and everything to the question that they're asking. So thesis writing is a key here and so is having an essay structure that allows you to express your ideas. Um, so that's the key for success here in the common mod. Now remember the way the exam is structured, we've got paper one, text and human experiences. The first section is our unseen text. It's 45 minutes writing time and you've got 10 minutes reading time. The reading time Time is for um, obviously to read the questions, but also you want to try and read all your text with it um, and being able to, you know, mark down. Okay, um, now remember before I go on, you always want to read the question first before you read your text because when you read the question and you go read your text, you're looking for the answer. You're not just taking your time to read the text and saying, okay, this is what the question is asking. We don't have the time for that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes, we are on the you know times running so you really need to make sure you read the question read the text and mentally you're like okay there's the answer so that's how um so that's an effective way to use your reading time section two is going to be sorry about uh okay sorry about that i've got section one there again but section two section one is unseen text section two is the essay you again you have 45 minutes to write the essay but you only have five minutes to um read the question and in that five minutes you kind of want to think okay this is the question this is what you know i've prepared these were my quotes this is what i've come into the room with now i need to adapt that to the question sometimes it'd be easy adaption done sometimes it can be hard so that's where practice comes into use if you've practiced with a lot of different questions you know how to maneuver your um how to maneuver your prepared you know uh, quotes and analysis around that's where success lies with the essay so section two is the essay again apologies for this section two is for the essay you've got 45 minutes writing time and five minutes reading time you want to use the reading time to read the question and mentally have a plan to attack that question now remember rubric is the key here everything is coming back to the rubric unlike other subjects and kind of fortunately unlike others unfortunately unlike other subjects we have that one rubric to go by we don't have lots and lots of dot points that we need to think about you've got that one rubric telling you everything in there and i personally find that better than you know having the 20 pages of the biology or the chemistry rubric well that's personal preference but yes everything is there in the rubric if you are um familiar with it if you know what it's asking this module is all about representations comes back to the representation of human experiences you're not reading the text to um obviously you know knowing the plot knowing what the text is doing is important but you are reading the text to tell me how has the text representing human experiences of different individuals and communities what how is the text doing that and all the texts that you study in this module do that very effectively in different ways okay so now that's the general picture here now conquering section one i won't talk a lot about it today but i'm going to give you my top four tips really here to attack that firstly you need evidence um you know you're not retelling in the unsection part you're not telling me what's happening in the text that's not what the marker is after they're asking you how human experience has, has been represented in the text you're not saying um you know the text retail uh, retells this, uh, the text tells the story of this boy who i don't know who had an experience in a hot air balloon um where he got to see the world and it's a bad discovery whatever what we are after here as i do apologize for the way example but what we are looking here is not for you to retell me what's happening but for you to say okay the text is telling me about the experience of this individual who's experiencing new things and discovering himself in the process that's a human experience so you need to have solid evidence um, and the evidence here a formula for that is it's a general formula but what we sort of have worked through here um uh, English faculty is that Q equals N minus one. So Q is the number of quotes. If it's an image or something, then it's the number of evidence. It's the evidence that you'll be using from the images or the technique. So Q is the number of quotes, which equals to N, which is the number of marks minus one. So if I've got a three marker, I want to have two quotes in there. If I've got a four marker, 
aiming for three quarts. Three quarts plus the technique and effect. Um, this is this is well again like I said it's a general formula but it's important because it makes sure that you have um, that you know you better you sh you want aim to have more quotes than less quotes. So even if you've got two quotes for the three marker, you may be able to get away with one, but you don't you don't want to leave that you know risky spot there. You want to be able to say okay I've got two there, so they can give me the two marks for the analysis and then a mark for my um for my topic sentence and in general. So again, good questions coming through. So if you've got any questions about that, please pop it up. But what I'm saying here is you need solid evidence. Um, you are telling me what the human experience is in the text. You're not retelling your story. So be very careful of that because it can happen. We haven't done this before. We're doing it for the first time. You're nervous. You're in an exam situation. You are trying to get those marks. So you're telling me whatever you see there. And that is so, so um, valid. So what we need to do is practice this to make sure that you're giving me the relevant evidence from there and you're giving me enough evidence. So in this case, Q equals N minus 1. So the number of quotes would equal um, it would equal to the number of marks minus one. Secondly, the structure. Um, and with the structure, uh, the first thing here is the direct topic sentence. You want to be a, um, you need to have a direct topic sentence that is telling, um, that is answering the question straight away. You know, we are not going around in circles. You don't have the time to do that. For a three marker, you don't want to write two sentences, three sentences, add the topic sentence. If the question is asking you, how does this text represent the human experience of discovery, for example, you don't want to say the text represents human experience of discovery and allows individuals to be. Yes, that's part of it, but you're not telling me anything new here. You're repeating what's there in the question. So what you need to do is be able to tell me that the text represents the human experience of discovery through the um, through the experiences or through through um, through the experiences of the little boy who's who is um, discovering himself in the hot air balloon. Something like that where we are talking, um, where we are specific, you know, I'm not just repeating the question again, I'm, just, I'm actually telling you in that very first topic sentence, how is it happening? Um, questions, you know, questions that are like, how does this text use um, language features to give insight into human experiences? You want to say the text uses language features like symbolism and metaphors um, in order to allow individuals to, in order to allow readers to gain insight into the human experience of um, loneliness, for example. So have a direct topic sentence. Now, structure, we want to aim for a, now structure and I've got QTEL there. That's your analysis bit. You want to have your quote. So quote, technique, effect and link. So we're not just saying the quote and saying, okay, the quote is used. This is what it shows. We need to say the quote is used in this way, the technique to have this effect. And then we link it back to human experiences and to the question. So that's very important. And then time management here is super important. You don't want to spend, you know, and, and it totally happens. Like, honestly, the first time you do it, you're spending a lot more time than you should on a three marker. And that's all right. That's why, again, practice comes into use here. So if I've got, let's say, um, again, a three marker, I want to aim for, let's say, six minutes. So how did I sort of calculate this? I like to think for section one, you want to try, you can smash it out in, in 40 minutes instead of 45 minutes. So if you take that 40 minute average, you're aiming for about two minutes per mark. So if it's a three marker, I'm aiming to spend about six at the most seven minutes there, finish it and move on. So that's kind of um, how, yeah, that's kind of, you know, like a plan to go about it. So that's the unseen text section. Now, if you've got any questions, pop them up. Let's move on to the essay now. And I think we've got more questions about the essay from what I'm seeing so far and keep them coming. So now the essay is all about linking back to the text and human experiences rubric plus your prescribed text. That's what the essay is. It's testing your knowledge of the rubric and how you have applied it to the prescribed text. So questions can ask about a specific human experience, emotion, anomaly, paradox, experience, um, the role of storytelling. This is all from your rubric. It is then not going to give you anything that is not in the rubric. That's the good thing here. You know, you only face what they tell you that they're going to throw at you. So have a good understanding of the rubric here. Remember, 
It's about the representation of human experiences in your text and most specifically, how is it done? The analysis bit, how is it done and why is it done? That's your link, that's your effect, you know. It's having this effect on the reader and it links back to human experiences. This way it's allowing, um, and again, it's in the rubric as well, you know, allowing individuals to gain new ideas, to gain new insights, to change their, um, to change their perceptions and stuff. So you kind of want to talk about these two bits. How is it done and why is it done? Thesis. That is your answer. Again, keep those questions coming. That is your answer to the question. So the first turn to success here is we know what we need to do with the essay. Let's break it down even further. Firstly, thesis. Remember, that's your answer to the question. You're answering the question. You are being specific. Um, and this is where, again, you know, teachers more teachers say that this is where the marker immediately they know what sort of the standard of the essay is. The thesis tells the marker that. Because the marker can, can see when you're actually answering the question versus when you're trying to answer the question by fitting in whatever you know you would have prepared for. So how do we get good at this? You practice. You practice against a range of different questions. Um, start off easy. Get to the harder questions. Um, and you know you can make up your own questions, and you can also find them online. You, you've got four papers to go off now, um, and you can find plenty of plenty of practice questions as well. So remember, the thesis is where you define the human experience using ideas from your prescribed text. So you're saying, what is the human experience? And remember, there may not be just one human experience, there may be a lot um, or, or a couple that you're talking about, and that's all good. You know, you can say, allows individuals to uh, gain an insight into the human experience of, um, sometimes a question will say, it's like the 2019 question for like, how does um, the text allow to gain an insight into the human experience of, or challenge your perception of the human experience of, and I remember learning this from the 1984 question, but there was like one specific human experience for each one. So did you? So you could go specifically to one human experience, or you can make it a lot more broad and talk about you know the general, the general human experience, and then in your paragraphs talk about specifically each human experience. There's no right or wrong structure as long as it's answering the question and you, you and you're getting everything in there. So obviously what I mean by that, not that, you know, you can just sort of flake it and it's not wrong, but what I mean is you can structure your ideas in any way as long as it makes sense, it's succinct and it's coherent. So that's the first bit of what is the human experience and then you need to talk about what is the relationship between the human experience and the text. How is the text giving us insight into the human experience and why is it doing that? What is it telling us? Um, links back to context, links back to purpose. Um, and you kind of want to, again, talk about, you know, why are we sort of gaining an insight into that? So critical thinking is quite important here where we need to look at, um, you know, where we're looking at different ideas, different ways of thinking about human experiences. So looking at Martha Nussbaum's contemporary American, so she's firstly um, a contemporary American ethical philosopher. And her way of thinking about human experience and the way that she talks about it um, is that she connects the concept of the uh, concept of moral imagination with storytelling. So stories use characters to present diverse perspectives, motivations, and experiences. And stories intensify emotions in readers. So therefore, the emotions and empathies that we gain as a result of storytelling that is expanding our moral imagination. So think about this in light of, you know, all um, of the fables and fairy tales and even texts that we read now. It's about us having empathy and emotions for the characters, which is allowing us to then um, expand our moral imagination. So this is what she specifically says about, you know, texts. But in summary, it's that texts are about emotions, sharing and the pursuit of justice. And that's the text from which, um, in which she talks about this specific concept of moral imagine of linking moral imagination with storytelling. Okay, next we've got Michael Foucault. So he is another navel grazing, <laughs> navel grazing, um, French philosopher, and he is associated with post structuralism. So he articulated the idea of power knowledge. Um, absolute truths are example of the exercise of power through acceptable forms of knowledge. So what he is saying basically that institutions and modes of discourse shape what is acceptable and therefore human experience 
experiences and truths are constructed by power and literature may exercise that power so think about this especially you know um if you're doing texts like crucible 1984 texts that really do bring this to uh bring this to light you kind of want to think about them um and be able to think about okay you know literature itself the text itself is shaping um you know is exercising that power to show us what's right versus what's wrong um, and we see that happening within the text as well. So it's a way of thinking, it's a way of critically thinking about human experiences being portrayed. Again, keep those questions coming. Um, okay, so that's basically what he said. I won't read the whole thing, but it's all about the idea of power dictating truths. Next, we've got the Beat Generation. So a literary movement in the 1950s to the 60s that expanded literary expression into areas that were considered taboo. So it articulated, so they articulated in their manifesto the new vision that naked expression is the seed of creativity. The artist's consciousness is expanded by the derangement of the senses and art eludes um, conventional morality. So what they're saying is that literature compels mainstream discourse to confront its own assumptions about what it actually means to be human. And along with that, literary transgressions have paved the way for tangible change to institutions. So there's about, so there's, so they're focusing on the role of literature to bring about change. So Alan Ginsberg says that I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, and naked. And basically, the idea here is that text prompt questions about the way in which we define humanity by drawing boundaries um, about, you know, what is and isn't acceptable and questioning, you know, why are certain human experiences tabooed and should they actually be tabooed from society? So... Again, a critical way to think about human experiences and the way human experiences have been shaped in our society. So essay structure now. Paragraphs, you want to base your paragraphs on different human experiences. But remember, even, um, even, though, we are ba even though we are basing our paragraphs on different human experiences, with every quote, you want to bring in a new idea. With every evidence, you're bringing in a new idea that links back to this big human experience. You're not repeating the same thing. So if I talk about prejudice, I'm not repeating about, let's say, discrimination every time. I'm bringing perhaps other ways of preju um, prejudice in society into. So I'm showing, sorry, sorry. So I'm bringing in um, other, I'm bringing in evidence that showcases the different ways in which prejudice is evident in the text other than just discrimination so this allows me to have this one big idea but give um a range of different evidence a, a range of different evidence that links back to this big idea here so paragraphs are based on different human experiences and every single evidence that you introduce introduces a new idea now paragraph checklist we want to have a topic sentence Right, that first topic sentence that tells me what, what this paragraph is going to be about, what human experience, experience you're discussing, and how that links back to the question. Um, remember, the link back to the question is very important. Um, sometimes we get carried away, you know, where we are so focused on getting our points across and getting our quotes and everything across, we forget about that linking part. So please make sure you link back to the question. That's super, super important here. Um, and again, that's, you know, and the first time you write an essay, you may not, it may not be at the forefront of your mind and that's totally okay, which is why I'm highlighting and flagging you here, link back to the question. So we've got a topic sentence, conceptual framework then, so each new piece of evidence reveals new ideas about the themes of the paragraph. So that's what I talk about, that's, you know, what I mean when I say it need, there needs to be a conceptual framework where every new point that you're introducing, it's something new. Every new evidence that you, every evidence that you bring in, something new. You're not repeating the same thing. Um, you are giving me solid, you know, you're giving me solid evidence to back up your point and showing me how the text is um, portraying a range of different human experiences. So that's that. Then your quote analysis, remember? Now, there's lots of different structures for it, right? Teal, peel, whatever. I personally like QTL, which is, I've got, which is why I've got it here. But you can use whichever one you like, whichever one works for you. But QTL works for me because it's telling me quote, technique, effect, link, where I know I won't go wrong because I've got those three, four things there um, and I need to follow it through. 
Sometimes, obviously, you can change around. You know, you can say the use of symbolism and then bring in your quote and then the effect. That works. But this tells me there's that um, that general framework that I need to stick to each time. But you use whatever works for you. Then linking. Remember, you have your audience impact. Don't forget your audience impact. You need to talk about, you know, why is it done? That's your audience impact. Um, and link it back to your thesis. Link it back to the question. Okay. So let's move on. Again, I'm seeing some awesome questions come through. Uh, please keep them coming through and we're going to go through them in the break. So an example here, I won't read through the whole thing, but I'm going to paint. So um, I'm going to highlight what the big ideas here are. So we've got a paragraph, a topic sentence. All will start with challenges, the assumption that truth and reality can be objective and exposes how both are determined by political power. All right, so that's a topic sentence. This is what the, um, this is what the paragraph is going to be about. Then the malleability of truth in the hands of political agents is ex exemplified in the party's um, slipstick doctrine. So what is happening is now I've got that big idea. Now I'm introducing related ideas to it. And then uh, then I've got my analysis that the accumulation of contradictions violently shatters readers' conventional expectations of truth, thus emphasizing its fragility in the political world. That's my effect here. Uh, that's my technique plus the effect. Um, then again, we've got, so actually before we go ahead, then I've got my um, audience impact, right? So in doing so, Erwell espouses the vulnerability of truth to manipulation, challenging the assumptions directly from the rubric, challenging the assumptions of his audience that it is possible to individually identify truths, even with the pressure to conform to collective truths. So that's, you know, you've got that one sort of part, one part of QTL, one round of QTL. Then... As, um, again, I won't read the whole paragraph, but as you read the paragraph, you see that new ideas are being um, are being um, introduced. So we start off with the malleability of truth in the hands of political agents, and it continues on from there um, by asserting the possibility of individuals to know objective truths, even in a totalitarian straight, um, sorry, totalitarian uh, state. Um, and moreover, and Orwell destabilizes his readers' trust in truisms and thus their conventional expectations of truth in reality. So every time I'm introducing new points, um, I'm not repeating the same thing, and I've got a range. So I've got a variety of evidence that is linking back to the big idea of truth and reality, but how it's um, and how Orwell is, but how Orwell is portraying that in different ways. 